Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. I uh, forgot my other camera today, so I guess we're doing it on an iPhone. So I hope it looks good for you. So today we're gonna talk about what's required for a rough and inspection on a home uh, and what the actual inspector looks for when he comes. So we're gonna point some key features out here today and uh, stick around and watch the show. Now some of the most important features on a rough-in inspection is having your boxes wired correctly, having your box heights done, uh, your panel installed, uh, and following all your electrical code rules. So we're just going to do a walk around here, some of the electrical. You can see we have our boxes on the wall. Uh, here's the three gang box for example. Braced on both sides and our wires going in and running up through the wall with our holes dispersing off throughout the room. Now. We also have pot lights in here. Uh, we use smash plates or what we call smash plates. It just makes it easier for the wire to come down where it's supposed to be. Uh, then we know where to cut it when it comes to the face out stage or putting on the plugs and switches. This is actually the kitchen. Um, you can see here we have some switches in the kitchen next to the patio door. And then it goes around the kitchen with the stove and under counter lighting and the actual counter outlets uh, for what we're required by code here. So we're actually required by code to have uh, a number of outlets on the counter as the counter goes along. Any counter space over 10 inches needs to have uh, a code outlet 20 amp uh, at 44 inches high. So these are some of the things that the inspector is gonna look for when he comes. Uh, just little things like box loading and how many, how many wires we actually have inside of a box. He's gonna look for things like uh, how well is the stove receptacle braced? Um, and he's also going to look for neatness and also stapling of wires. So those are some key features that they're going to be looking for uh, when they come to do the inspection. You can see around the room here and you'll notice the tape. The tape is for blown in insulation, which is going to be uh, next week. Um, but basically we don't need to put vapor barrier around our boxes because they're doing the blown in insulation which has a vapor barrier right in it. So you can see some plugs here in the living room and around uh, the room. Now it's every 12 feet that we need an outlet. So that's also another thing that the inspector is gonna look for. Um, and he's gonna look for anything over a two gang box to be actually braced. So anything over this size is gonna need an actual brace on it. It's just to keep the box steady so that it doesn't get pushed back into the wall. So I'll show you what I mean here. Over here, you can see we have a four gang box and that is a brace on the other side. And that's just simply to protect the box and to keep it lined up when we put it into the wall. Now you may ask yourself, do these code rules really matter? And yes, they do actually. That's why we have inspections on properties. Uh, we have an electrical inspection authority that comes out and does the inspection. So they have to put their stamp of approval on it before they'll give what's called a cover up inspection. So in order for the contractor, the general contractor to insulate vapor barrier and drywall, uh, we need to get the electrical pre-inspected in this rough-in stage. So you can see through here, as we go through the bathroom, we have a bathroom fan installed, a uh, pot light over the sink. Um, here by the sink, we have some outlets and a GFCI. And you can see how we staple our wires. We do all separate wiring staples, um, just because we're not allowed to double up uh, wires under one staple. So that's one another thing that the inspector is going to be looking for. He's also going to check to make sure that we have these smash plates. And I, I mentioned earlier that the smash plates, we put them in to make it easier, but it's also a code necessity when we do drywall ceilings. We don't need to do them for wood ceilings. Um, anywhere there's a regular light box, we're okay, but anywhere we have a ceiling fan, it needs to be braced with a proper box. And we need to use the proper boxes for the proper applications. So you can see here, down to a two gang uh, wall switch. And there's actually too many wires here to staple individually, so we use what's actually called standoffs. So these standoffs allow us to put more wire within that space or that cavity. And in addition, we also need to have smoke detectors here um, in each room, and we need to have them on each level. So this is a one level house, so we can have one in the hallway, which is out here, and then we can have uh, a smoke detector in each bedroom. Now obviously all that stuff ties back to the electrical panel um, and it all has to be tied in for the rough-in inspection 
at least the wires need to be inserted into the panel. We need to have the grounds done up. So that what we do there is when the inspector comes to do the inspection, uh, he gives us an actual rough and inspection with a construction hookup. So this gives us up to 10 circuits on the construction hookup so that the contractors can keep working and we can remove the temporary service from the outside of the building. And the reason for this is because the temporary service is only rated for 30 or 40 amps um, and we can go up to the full 200 under a construction hookup for the actual house. This allows the contractor to hook up any construction heaters and get some temporary heat going so that they can uh, dry the crack fill, especially when it's in the colder months. Now you can see here, everything terminates back to the panel. I have one of my journeymen. Uh, he's actually putting the panel in now. The panel's up in place and he's working on tying all these wires that I've showed you throughout the house back into this panel and he's gonna terminate it. I don't really wanna get in his way here, but basically you can see where it comes into the panel and he's gonna insert all those conductors from the ceiling down um, and then go into the panel on each side. Another thing worth a mention, um, when we're running low voltage cables or phone and cable or internet or whatever we're running, we're supposed to keep them two inches off the other electrical wires. So this is something that the uh, electrical inspector also looks for. You can notice they're bundled together there in a separate bundle. <coughs> we need to keep them two inches or 50 millimeters off the other electrical wires. And this is just for frequency noise or noise interference. So that's something that they want to see. And another thing, they don't want to see them coming down through the same hole. So if you have a communications line, and this is very important, you can see here on one side we have the electrical box and then on the other side we have the communication. That communication runs all the way up the wall by itself and goes through a set separate set of holes so that we don't bring that through with regular electrical wires. Now these are obviously all uh, issues and code rules that we follow on a new home. Uh, there's not, it's not too bad once you get used to it. We do it quite frequently, um, but the inspector does come in and he checks over the code rules. Um, and he'll call us on any or fail us on any that we need to fix up. And like I mentioned, this is all before the drywall goes on. So this is an important, uh, and this is actually inspection day. The inspector's coming later on and he's gonna have a look through our wiring and then uh, put his stamp of approval on it. Once that stamp of approval is done, like I mentioned, then we can get the power hooked up and move forward from there. Now, when we come back after the drywall is all up, that's when we start to do what we call the face out. We put on our plugs, our switches, our light fixtures, our pot lights, and we tie the actual rest of the panel in and start powering up circuits. So that's pretty much it. That's what's involved on a rough -in inspection. Um, hope you like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.